everybody, it's Simon Mixed Up Craft. Thank you for watching my tutorial today. I'm going to be showing you the Retiform technique. I'm actually revisiting this technique because I have already done a tutorial, but I'm doing a technique segment in the Social Paper Crafter magazine and I thought I would share this technique. I love it, loads of you guys love it, and if you haven't already seen it or know about it, I'm sure you will love it as well. So, um, this is what it is. So this is the effect you get and basically it's, um, you can see here you've got all these different kind of shapes and different stamped images on them but none of them overlap, none of the colours bleed um, and it gives you this really fun technique. Um, I will put in the video of the one I done last year here so you can obviously look at that one as well. This one again is using just some different colours. So what I've done is I've used the stamping up in colours for... I'm not a Stampin' Up! demo, so apologies if I get this wrong, but I think these are 2018 to 2020 colours. Anyway, I'm using Fresh Fig, Tranquil Tide, Powder Pink, Berry Burst, and Lemon Lime Twist. So that's what I've used on that one. That's all of those colours. Probably looking back now, I would have moved that one maybe down here or here, because I've got quite, you know, two really dark colours in the top left there, but it still works and it still looks really good. With this, I've used the stamp sets here, and this is the Tropical Chic stamp set. Now, when I done the other Retiform tutorial, I used a stamp set from one of the Creative Stamping magazines. One thing I would always say that I find easier when I do this technique is using a stamp set set. So, you know, you can use all different stamps, by all means, you know, have a play around, but I just find it's much easier when you've got a theme all put together for you. So I know that all of these sit well together with the sentiment, which I finished off there on top. So kind of all that thinking is kind of done for you. So if you've got any stamp sets and you've got some with, you know, patterns and, you know, different sizes, um, you know, I've got shapes, I've got a, quite a lot going on with this one. Um, so each kind of section looks, you know, very different, but still all works well together. Um, I wish I had the one from last year with me, but that's been now given to somebody. Um, but I'll share those pictures in my blog as well, just so you can get more inspiration. So those are the two main things really. So get a stamp set that's maybe already a theme or something that's put together for you. My focus is disappearing there, there we go, it's trying to find itself. Um, and then when it comes to colours, it's really anything goes, but I would say don't go too dark. You can see here, you know, any darker really and you're going to lose it, because I always stamp in black on top. That's completely optional as well, use whatever you want, but I just like the, the real kind of you know contrast between the lighter colours and then that real deep black that you stamp with. So. What you need to do is grab yourself a card base. Now I'm using, this is a, um, a five by seven card base. I like five by seven cards. Um, I just, I think they're a good size. So um, I've got my mat here, which is four and three quarters by six and three quarters. Um, and it's entirely up to you how you wanna go. Now I tend to stick and do six sections, but you could do four and just do kind of through the middle like that. You could do, um, you know, five, you can do odd numbers, it's entirely up to you. But I'm just gonna stick with the six, um, but once you get to see how you do it, um, it is very, very easy. Now, I have done in the last tutorial, I used post-it notes. Um, you need something that's sticky that you can lift off easily because you are gonna be moving it around. However, I've searched high and low for these um, post-it notes, can't find them anywhere. So I'm gonna show you how you can also do it with washi tape. Now, you can also use like copy paper, you want something very, very thin that's got no kind of um, bulk to it. Um, but the problem with the copy paper is you need to make sure you keep it in place and do not move it from when you've blended your colour to then when you've got a stamp over it. So it is easy if you've got either post-it notes or washi tape. So I'm just, I've got my washi tape on a little roll in front of me here, so I'm just going to tear some off. So this is just standard half inch washi tape. If you've got thicker, then that's good as well. Um, so what I'm going to do is go a little bit different with this one here. So I'm going to literally do my first section there, okay? So this section here is what I'm now going to colour in. So I'm going to start off here because I've got these already laid out. So um, I'm just going to stick with what I've got. You can see I'm covered. <laughs> Wear some uh, gloves if you if you don't want to get this one um, all over you because it is a bit messy. So I'm just inking up. This one is Lemon Line Twist. And I'm just going to start off my paper and then work my way in and just blend all the way around. So around the edge bit, you want to get that nice dark kind of you know edge showing there just so you can really see it and then when I mat this on top of my white card base you'll really see that edge and then again I'm just coming in very carefully now if you're using a post-it note 
you will have more room to be able to blend, start blending off and then come into your area. I've only got this little half inch so I'm just carefully coming in there. Um, so just bear that in mind but it does work either way so don't worry if you don't have the post-it notes. So there you go, I've got a nice blended area there. Now if you don't want to blend the whole area you can leave it white in the middle, it's again entirely up to you. So, <clears throat> excuse me, now I'm going to select some of my stamps. So I'm going to use this one here which is this big big leaf and I'm actually just going to do one big stamp of it. So I'm just going to ink this up. I'm using the VersaFine just because it stays wet for longer so you've got a bit, a bit of time to kind of work out where you want it to go. Now the, the the, the kind of point of the retiform is to over, overlap things. You want them to have that, so you can see here where the leaf has gone off that side. You know, you've got it, it stamped there, but it's not gone onto that side. So you want to make sure, like, I could just stamp that there so it doesn't actually go over this washi tape, but that isn't really the, the effect you're going for. So I'm going to come down over my washi tape and stamp. Just make sure you get it, just wiggle it a little bit over the washi tape. If it doesn't take, you can use a black pen. Um, which I'll show you in a minute because there's always a little bit that doesn't quite grab on. So there we go. So if you, if I bring this one up, I'll just peel that off here. I'll just bring it up there. Can you see there's just tiny little bits there where it's gone over that washi tape. Those bits there you can just use a little black marker pen with or leave them. It doesn't really matter, especially if you're covering them with sentiments. Now I said I was only going to do one, but actually now I'm going to do some more because I <laughs> changed my mind. So I'm going to then come in from the corner here, like so, and then I'm going to do another one coming up there. So you can see I've gone over that washi tape again, like so. And then what you can do is peel that washi back and you get that nice corner on your card. So that's that piece done there. Then you want to now start your next section. So I'm, I'm finished with that one now. I'm just going to pop that one to that side there just so I know where I am with everything. So now you just want to grab another piece of washi tape or a fresh, um, every time you want a fresh piece, so either it's a fresh piece of um, uh, post-it note or washi tape. And you don't have to, but I always find I want to start from the corner. You could come in up there if you wanted to. Um, I think I did do it differently last year on the other card. But now I'm going to go from the very tip here, this very corner, and then down like so. Okay, so now I'm going to do this corner here. So I'm going to choose, let's take this one off, and I'm going to go for Fresh Fig. So I'm just going to ink that one up. And then again, just come in from the outside and just work your way. And that's covered pretty quickly. I'm not going to spend too much time on that. I don't want to go too deep with these darker colours because I do want you to really be able to see the black. So now I'm going to go in with this one here. So I'm using, that's this one on the, the pack on the box. So again, just ink that one up. And I'm going to do my first one coming in from the corner again, like so. And then I'm going to do another bit there. And then this one, I'm going to come right up into the whole area. And then that's probably it. So there we go. And then again, get your washi tape and just take that off. So you can see now I've got that section. Okay, so it's really starting to look good. I do, I, like I said, I love this and I always get nice results with it. So next you want to now, I'm going to section off. I'm going to join these corners and have this as a whole section. So this is when you now need to kind of seal the three sides. So at the moment we just had to do one bit of washi tape because we've gone in on those sides. But now we need to seal it all off. So you're going to stick on the image. You want to get right up to the edge and maybe just have a tiny, tiniest bit that isn't covered, just so that it all kind of blends in together and you don't run the risk of getting a white line. Now you can have a white line in between each one, so if you want to do it that way you can, but personally I like it when it's literally all butted up together and they all meet, so I'm just doing it like so. And then the last piece is going to go from corner to corner, like so. 
Okay, so now I'm going to use the, what's this one, powder pink. So I'm going to go for something quite light in the middle. So I'm just inking that up and then again, I'm just going to go all the way around the edges first. Okay, so now that's that one. And then the middle, I want to do this lovely hibiscus um, flower. So I'm going to ink that up. And because I want to get a really nice full image, I'm going to do one right in the middle first and then work my way um, out. And then you don't really run the risk of having any, any gaps. Sometimes if you start your way around all the edges and then you've got a bit in the middle and it's not quite big enough for the stamp you're using, you end up with that kind of space. Whereas this way I kind of stop that happening. And then I'm going to do one there. And I'm going to keep these quite close together. It's such a nice stamp, this one. Really, really like it. And do one. Let's bring this one quite far in because this is going to be quite a full one as well. And then I'll do a tiny bit down there. And again there. And then one more. We'll pop that one there. I should have a nice, yeah, okay, and then it's the reveal, this is the bit I love, I love you do it and then you, you know, you get to see what it's really like when you peel each one off. Actually, before I do that, I'm just going to grab, like I said, with the marker, if you've got any parts and you think, oh, I want that to be a bit more deeper or joined better, just with my pen there, I'm just going along just the edges, it's not too bad really, just a little bit, and it just gives you that sharper finish. So that's why it's, it's also good to use black because it's easy to match up a marker pen. Whereas if you're using colours, the likelihood, unless you are using all Stamping Up products, you won't have that exact you know, matching pen. Uh, let's just do those ones. I think that's about right. And that bit there, there we go. So now we can just pull that across and that one there. So now can you see, i just bring that one up. How cool is that effect? Really, really like it. Okay, so now we've done, so I've used those three. Now I've got to be careful on getting black. I've got a little bit there, so I need to cover that with the next stamp I use. So, um, grab another pit, pit, another bit of washi tape. And we're kind of going to mirror that image really now. I've seen what I'm going for. So I'm going to do that one there, like so. So now I just need to do that whole area and then I'll do the next one from that corner down to there and then I know I've got that triangle left in the middle. So with this one I'm going to use Tranquil Tide. I really should have put gloves on. Um, I have got other, um, what do you call it, blending tools and I've got one for every colour <laughs> but uh, not for these ones so never mind. Right so again kind of Start from the outside and then work your way in. And again, I don't want to go too dark in the middle, so I'm just going to keep it like so. And then for this one, um, what do I want to use? I'm going to use this pattern here, so it's just this kind of, I don't know what it is, but it looks good. So I'm going to ink that one up and just go over. This one's quite easy, really. You can just kind of put it wherever you want. Okay, so that one's done. There's a few bits there I'm not completely happy with or where my pads kind of like hit the surface so I can just go in with this and just kind of add in more. Again it's a really easy pattern so it's quite easy to uh, add in extras and you wouldn't actually think I'd done it myself so um, let's do one there. There we go and then again just peel that piece off like so. Again just take it away from that white just so you can see it a bit better there. Um, and then the next one again another bit of washi tape so it's going to be that corner to that corner. So now I'm going to fill in this area here and I think I'm going to mirror this colour here. I do really like the lemon lime twist so let's pop that one down and I'm going to again start from the outside and just work my way take this off. There we go. Okay, and then I'm going to use the same stamp again. So you can repeat again, there's no rule. You could do every single one with the same same stamp if you wanted to. So I'm going to do this one here. 
Um, there we go. And again, if there's any bits, just kind of blend it in with your pen. Now you can see there, but I'm going to cover it now with my ink. But see, you've got to be careful if you um, if you've got too much ink on your fingers. You can just see the little dots there. So I'm just going to wash my hands quickly. Okay, so now we're down to this last section. So you now need to seal off all three sides. So you're going to stick on the pattern side, not the white side. So again, just leaving a tiny, the tiniest amount. It's not even a millimeter. So it's that one. But also the good thing about using the washi is it will stretch. Sometimes with post-it notes, they're only that size. So you'd have to double them up. So I guess with the washi tape, you can just do it all in one go. Okay, I'm going to use a berry burst. So I'm just going to ink that one up. And again, I'm going to try not to go too dark in the middle. So just start from the edge and work your way in. Okay, like so. And then the last one I've got is this really nice big thick leaf to go in the middle. So again, just get that inked up nice. And I'm going to start down the corner here. Okay, and just finish off that one there. And see now I want to do that there, but can you see if I stamp it, it's going to cover that bit. So that's when a post-it note's handy because it gives you that, you know, that kind of more of a surface area to stamp on. Um, but the easiest way to do that is just add two more strips of washi. So across two both of my videos, I think I'm showing you, you know, ways to do it. Um, you know, with either both. So if you don't have one or the other, then you can still do this. But I just wanted that little bit there. So that's that done. And again, just because this is a thicker image, I can just see just a few bits there. I just want to make it more crisp on that join. Okay, so that's that one. And then now you just need to take off all three of those sides. Okay, so let's just flip over this paper just so you can see this better. And what I can notice, or what I did notice even, is there where I took the washi off, it's kind of taken a little bit off of my um, ink colour. So I'm just going to just ever so slightly, in fact it wasn't lemon lime twist, it was fresh fig, just going to carefully work back over that. And you wouldn't even know it happened. There we go. So that is that all done. Okay, so now what I need to do is add my sentiment and pop this onto my card base. Okay, I've just stamped the um, with much love and thanks because I am going to be giving these all as thank you cards. So I'm going to pop this one and just die cut this one out. Okay, I'm just going to pop this on some foam squares just to give it some dimension because obviously at the minute it's quite flat and you can now add sequins to this you could add nouveau drops any of your pearl drops any other kind of bits and pieces to it but i'm going to sit this uh, i'm doing it in the middle of the card not the middle of the that kind of diamond shape so let's see about there i think and make sure it's nice and straight there we go, and then I'll just get that stuck on my card. Okay, just get that lined up. You should have a nice little border. And you can see that I just bring up, and there's my card all finished. So I've done one, two, three, and you can just see the different, that one I still need to pop on a card base. I think that was just another mat there, yeah. So that is the retiform technique. So I have just focused on these colours, um, you will see the other ones i done in that tutorial that I shared earlier. Um, but yeah, there are endless results with this. Like I said, you could do, I've just stuck to the six kind of sections. You could do eight, 10, 20, you could have so many tiny ones. So really do go and have a play around with it because it's just really, really fun. And I think it makes really beautiful cards. So that is today's tutorial. That's today's technique. Um, like I said, this will all be in our um, Social Paper Crafter magazine. All the links and everything for that will be out, um, will be out, will be down below in the video description. It's out every other month. And um, yeah, I hope you enjoy reading it. So as always, if you enjoyed today's tutorial, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel to see more. Thanks for watching. Bye.